Hi there, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you. That depends on where you are right now watching me from. God bless you. Welcome once again to this platform. Yes, you know what we do on this platform. We uh, come to you, we bring the update of the issues that are flying around the social media. That is what we do on this platform. We come here for more clarity and for more information about those things might have seen or heard on the space of social media that is what we do on this platform so i want to welcome you once again for another update thank you very much thank you for joining yes there was an inquest sitting today in Ikorodu, lagos and uh, the inquest is looking at the cause and what actually led to the pie of moba Ilerolua um aloba and today a lot of things happened in the court. A lot of things were said in that magistrate, magistrate court today in Nikorodu. Though uh, there was a, a, a picture flying around the media of Mama Mobad and her daughter in law. So all those things were just part of those things that happened today at the inquest. Yes, and uh, after the inquest, city, the lawyer of Wumi and the lawyer of uh, Alaba family, Baba, Baba Mobad also speak, and in that particular speech, especially from that Mobad lawyer, he, he actually expansiates on what actually happened today because the pathologist was in the court today and the pathologist was examined, and there were a lot of questions that uh, they threw to him. And today, the, the pathologist said a lot about uh, their findings on the, what actually led to the uh, of Moba. And at the end of what the pathologist said, they could not ascertain what actually happened to Ilerio Lua Loba. And the lawyer said a lot of things that uh, they, uh, they need to look into. So I want us to hear the brief from the uh, Aloba family lawyer, that is Moba lawyer, to tell us the details of what the pathologist said today at the court. So we will come back and hear from Wumi's lawyer too about what he said. Thank you. Uh, okay, I can see the boss and yes, I, I don't want to use any English. I want you to use <laughs> it's my captain. All right, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Yes, sir. Um I am going to introduce you myself. Uh, this is the barrister Shitu, the SAN lawyer to Mubad's family. Uh, I am Arifanla Jogun Omodogba. Sir, concerning today's proceeding, talking about the pathologies and the evidences and the uh, testimonies being given Master. after the cross examine, what is your take, sir? So far, so good. From the proceedings today, it is clear to everyone, including the blind, that uh, the pathologist gave a report that is inconclusive. There were certain steps that ought to be taken by virtue of the toxicology report, which he admitted were not taken. He also admitted that there were problems with the lungs, problems with the heart, problems with the kidney, and pregnant, uh, problems with the screen, and that any of those problems will have caused death. So if there are problems with those vital organs of the body, from moderate to severe autolysis, for what he said, by his own conclusion, then you cannot say you cannot ascertain the cause of death. He also admitted that there was, there was injury, and that injury, if not treated on time, could lead to infection. Eh? So the question to ask is, is it not possible for in injury to cause death? Is it not possible for injury if it leads to infection to cause death? So all of us are we, we, we are not legible. We all know that even if you hit your leg on a stone, that can result in death. He discovered several things that were wrong in the report. He found that the lungs was uh, fault, the heart. Kidney, the kidney, pancreas, the pancreas, the screen. All of this suffered from in his own world, moderate to severe autolysis. So when something is severe, but can't he cause death? He said yes. So you cannot come before the court 
and then tell the court that the cost of death cannot be asserted. You also said the, the, the injection, the nose gave an injection, and the substance you analyze. And uh, you know that that substance can cause death too. Some of the, from the diag I mean, the, uh, diagnosis of the, of the substances. So, from all indications, there were no materials before him who should have pointed to the direction of what caused death. But he chose to ignore those materials and came to a conclusion. I, I even said the toxicology report which he relied on was not made by him. And that, uh, I also asked him whether the toxicology report was, was certified. It wasn't certified. There was no report before the court. If you want to look for the cause of death of Mubad, you should look beyond this report. Because he said he didn't visit the scene of the crime. He didn't visit the hospital. He didn't even assert the manner of death. All he was concerned with the cause of death, which he believed was not asserted. And I, I, through the cross examination, we were in court. He was highly discredited. The report was highly what? Discredited. So let's wait for further proceedings. We could not continue today because there, there is a, a court order from the High Court, saying proceedings, obtained by another party. And when an order is obtained, whether rightly or wrongly, it must be it. The High Court has given an order. The Corona has no choice than to stay proceedings. So what I will agree to is that this magistrate, the Corona, in my view, is interested in doing justice. And I think we should give, him the, benefit, give the court the benefit of doubt. Thank you. Uh, that is the way it sounds. And welcome, guys. And we have heard from the from the son, son, son uh, lawyer situ of all what he said in that particular interview by Arifa. And you know, from all those things that you hear the lawyer said, you will also be confused that uh, the pathologist is saying that uh, well. He said a lot of points there that the kidney is damaged, the lungs is damaged, but the a point that uh, the pathologist said that Laya C2 uh, also was uh, uh, pointing to was the fact that they discovered later that there was an injury on mobile. No, the injury, they did not tell us the specific area of the body that was injured. So. That is all what we are hearing, and from this part, it means that we still we are still going a long way to know what actually led to the buy of mobile. Now, the lawyer Tugumi also speak at the court today, and uh, I want us to hear what the lawyer Tugumi said. Then we will come back and just give a brief, a summary of all that you might have heard in this video. Thank you. God bless. Order notice. Uh, first of all, what is your take and what do you think might have caused this information? Uh, yes, you see, it's very easy. We have, we have what we call a hierarchy of courts in Nigeria. We have, um, uh, you know, the magistrate courts, the high court, or federal high court, and the, the coordinate uh, of coordinate jurisdiction. We have the national industrial court, the coordinate jurisdiction, you know, by constitution, by section 6 of the constitution. Then we have the Court of Appeal, we have the Supreme Court. So, these are the hierarchy of courts that we have in Nigeria. So, if a proceeding is going in one court, especially the low court, uh, lower court, especially uh, like now, for instance, the magistrate court is where we are. And um, I, I know that some time ago, uh, Professor Smith came to the court to join, because the application for joining. And the court was of the opinion that come. We have gone past that stage. We have gone for the proceedings. Bringing an application for gender at this point is inappropriate and so on and so forth. And uh, he, the court, however, granted him the uh, permission or leave for him to ask his questions. So he felt agreed and said he's going to challenge it. And he had challenged, the, he had challenged the, that decision of the court. And the high court has granted a stay of proceedings till further notice. So on 
until that order is uh, vacated, this court will be happening, um, you know, uh, in violation of the order of the superior court. So the court has done the right thing to stay proceeding and watch what is going to happen with the appeal. Thank you for that clarification and that enlightenment. But with the look of things, yeah. what do you want to put in the mind of the public yeah. concerning the verdict being passed down from the higher court to the corona inquest to be put a hold to? Most especially when one of the vital witnesses is about to be cross examined. Yeah, it's unfortunate because you see, this kind of thing is not very safe bringing our clients out. But because we don't want to create the wrong impression in the mind of the people and to show that. My client, uh, see Cynthia, uh, the way the mobile's wife has nothing to hide. That's why we say, okay, let her come out today. And she's here now, she's funny, nothing is going to happen again today. I've been wasted, and um, you know, it's, um, it's a lot of trouble. And again, I can tell you, it's a lot, you can see the way they are shouting, that's one of the things we don't want that to be coming up. And let me tell you, this kind of uh, thing is passing a, a, a wrong information or the wrong signal. To the society, to the public, they will not know they will think, oh, it's the lawyers that are delaying. Oh, is it the judges that are delaying? It is the state that will order. Nothing anybody can do. If you look at the magistrate, she, she wants to go on. She wants to go on. She will try and go on. But the law, you know, has hands, is, uh, hands. The hands are tied. There's nothing she can do. Uh, the last question I would love to put to you before I'm um, going to uh, let go of it today is that uh, with the look of things yeah. and according to your explanation that your client has nothing to hide that is why she's been here yeah. today yeah. Uh, my last question is this will the people out there believe that it's not because she's about to be cross-examined that is why the court is because we have different kind of speculation all around some people yeah. saying there are people you know covering your client uh, you know trying to you know shade her not to bring her out not to let her be cross-examined or many questions being put to her in order to put her in a tight corner uh, do you think that is the right way or that is the major reason why the court has been putting an oath to because to me it looks somehow similar well you still let me tell you it is highly preposterous to commonsensical reason for anybody to think that because she's about to give evidence because what happened happened in the public glare in the face of everybody the friends of everybody I was not aware of any other until the Lena Stig, my respected Lena Stig, said it and informed the court. And the judge, like a you know, responsible judge and experienced one at that, said, let me not take it for granted and continue with the proceedings. She also identified the fact that, um, you know, important uh, witnesses in court or, was, you know, was in court. The, she wanted to go on, but she can't go on because of the law. Now, what power has my client, you know, with me has to say, oh, the court should not go on and so on and so forth. And again, let me tell you, I have the power. On, I can use the instrumentality of the law to stop her from coming. I can also go to court to go and, go and take another. That she has already given evidence that calling her to come and give evidence is the game. It's oppression and it's abnormal. But we don't want to do that. We can do that. If we go to high court, we get the other. If they don't give up, we go to court of appeal. If they don't give up, we go to Supreme Court. That can last 10 years. And they will not give it. She will not give it. So this is to tell you that we are willing. We have nothing to do. We have no skeleton in our cupboard. We want to also help in the process. We are lawyers and we must keep to the tenets of the rule of law because we believe in law. Just try to differentiate. Just try to differentiate your clients and others in the sense of the common word being used against all of them, all the people around Mubad, the last 72 to 48 to 72 hours are all called suspects. And Corona Inquest is not going to treat anyone as a suspect. They are all being treated as a witness. I want you to put it out, or I should put it to you. You know, I want to use it all your time now. <laughs> I'd love to put it to you that your client is one of those around Mubad, the last 72 hours, and she should also be regarded 
as a suspect. Uh, uh, yes, everybody is a suspect, anybody around it, because there is doctrine of last sin. You understand? Under criminal law, that's what we call the doctrine of last sin. If somebody died, has died, and they want to inquire of what caused the death of the person, those people around him are last. You know, at the time he died, they are possible suspects. This is exactly what has happened. It, there is no difference. Yes, she can be a suspect. There is no big deal about that. We have other friends, the other celebrities who were around him, and uh, they have not. The court has not spared anybody. Neither are they a uh, 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 differentiated, you know, amongst all of them. She is there, and she has come to give evidence. She is also coming again to shed more light on the gray areas that some of the people perceive to, you know, not to be very clear. So, and we are going to help in that. All right, lastly, sir, so that uh, you can go. No problem. Lastly, sir, uh, is this going to be the last inquest, or what is your view? No, this is going to be the last inquest. There can't be two inquests. You understand? What you can have. What I'm trying to say, I'm not talking about having another form of inquest. Is this going to be the last proceeding in this case, mm. or there is a continuation? It's a continuation, but now it's kept in abeyance, because uh, um, because of the order of court is that they suspended until the other granting stay has been discharged. It's like putting a seal on something or a blockage that, oh, you cannot pass until certain conditions or conditionalities are met. So, when the conditionalities are met, they, they will come back here. Those who are about to will come here, we will start again afresh, and we will continue with the evil. No problem. Thank you so very okay. much. Once again, my name is Arif Anla Jogu. All right. Thank, Thank you, sir. You, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, welcome back, guys. And from all the uh, video, from all the um, interview, from the speech of a, a mobile lawyer and that of Miss lawyer, I think we we know that we are we are still having a long way to go in this uh, battle of uh, justice for mobile. And what actually led to mobile? Uh, you know, a lot of questions need to be answered. And uh, why is that? Uh, the pathology did not even fish the 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 uh the the um, the area or the point of the crime. So according to what lawyer um uh, son Shito said, he said the pathologist confessed that he did not fish it the uh, place of the crime and which is going to help him also to at least to arrive at some conclusions about what actually by mobile and after carry or or there was a proceeding from the federal court that the pro there they should not move forward again for now from that um inquest and that is a kind of uh concern for everyone but they have to obey the federal high court and will be given the details of what actually happened or what is going to happen so guys that is all that we have for you today about the inquest and uh, we just pray that uh, this uh, particular fight for the justice for mobile will be achieved and we pray that god almighty will make everything to be perfect as touching this part two. so guys so let us continue to pray and let us fold their hands i believe that god will actually uh, reveal every secret that uh pertain to uh, what led to the pie or what or who by mobile so guys that is the update for now about mobile so to the next time when i will be coming again to give you more update about this particular matter and also other issues around the social media so thank you for joining and i want to say bye for now and please guys do Stay safe. Bye-bye. God bless you.